Hi, and welcome to today's presentation. We are so excited to have everybody joining us today. I see folks are uh, trickling into our room from the waiting room. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started in just a second. I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Megan Cornwell. I'm today's moderator here at Teachstone. And we are excited to be talking about CDA with class, what that means, the different options that we have, and how it can support you as an educator or as a site leader. Today's presentation um, is being recorded. So before we jump into all of the great content that my presenter is going to be covering, I do wanna you know, remind folks that today's presentation is being recorded and we will send you the slides We'll send you the um, the recording of the event and any of the additional resources that may come up throughout today's presentation. We'll send that to you in an email that will go out tomorrow. Um, let's see. It looks like our slides are not yet showing, so I'll give our folks on the back end just another minute to pull those up. And in the meantime, let us know where you where you are joining from. We have a chat box and we have a Q&A box. So if you want to drop in the chat box where you're joining, we love to hear it. We are the interactions company, so we love to see where folks are coming from. I'm coming with, at you today from Richmond, Virginia. So shout out to any of my Virginia friends out there. Um, and oh, yay, more Virginia people. Phoenix, nice, love it. Um, and then we also have a chat or we have a chat box. That's where you're adding where you're from. And then we also have a Q&A box. So if you have questions specific to our content today or questions for Aaron as Aaron runs through all the content, please put it in the Q&A. That's just a little bit easier for us to keep tabs. Make sure that we answer your questions because sometimes things get a little bit buried. The chat moves very quickly. Um, thanks for pulling the slides up and I am going to pass it over to Aaron. Aaron is our wonderful presenter today who is going to be going through the CDA with class content. Welcome, Aaron. Great. Thank you, Megan. Um, and so I am Erin Sabina. Um, you may have seen me do demos previously. I've been with TeachStone um, going on almost six years now, almost at the six year mark. I can stop saying five and a half. Um, prior to being with TeachStone, I worked in uh, child cares. Um, I worked in some juvenile detention centers. I worked in um, a pediatric neuropsych office. So I did some IEP evaluations. Uh, and then I found TeachStone, discovered class, and I love it here, um, and excited to share about our CDA with class. Uh, so if you can, um, so we already said where you're joining us from, but if you could also let us know what your role is. So are you a teacher slash caregiver? Are you a coach or a mentor, an admin, uh, an observer or data collector? If other, if you can also put in the chat what your role is, that would be awesome. So let's see. I'm seeing lots of administrators and site leaders. About a third of folks are site leaders and admins. A quarter are teachers, caregivers. And then a few others, I see people adding in. Oh yeah, Melanie, that's a really great point. What about those of us who wear many, many, many hats? And that's probably most everyone on this call, right? <laughs> I, well, everyone in education is like, I do a lot of stuff. Um, that's why we try to ask primary role, but we totally understand everyone's doing so much. So let us know, what are some of your hats that you're wearing? I, that is like such, I had a conversation with someone recently. I don't know if she's on this call right now, but, but who said that she's leading um, early childhood, special education, nurses, um, there was something else wow. and, and then construction, construction projects on top of all of the other stuff. And I was like, I, wow. I don't, that's, that's amazing to me. That's, in, I mean, I can't there should even be imagine. a job title called, I do it all, Jack, <laughs> I do Jack it, all, all the things. Jack of all trades. Yeah. I'm going to stop sharing the results here, but as you can see, we're, we're pretty evenly spread. Just a few of the observer data collector roles, but everyone else representing many hats, I'm sure, teachers, admins, coaches, and other. Awesome. Thanks, all. All right. Awesome. So uh, our objectives for today, we're going to be learning and exploring. So we're going to learn about the benefits 
of the only CDA program that's powered by class. And then we're going to dive into it and explore the high quality engaging online platform. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So a question that comes up a lot that we made sure to add in here um, is what is a CDA? So a CDA is a Child Development Associate Credential. Uh, so you might receive this without higher ed, you might receive it in addition to higher ed, but it's focused specifically on child development, early childhood. It's based on a core set of competency standards that guide early childhood professionals toward becoming qualified educators of young children. And so the CDA itself is issued not by TeachStone, but the credential is issued by the Council for Professional Recognition. So if we can go to the next slide, please. So that said, so what TeachStone does provide, so we're not providing the credential, what we're providing is a portion of the process. So we're providing the 120 clock hours um, that meet the 10 training hours in each of the CDA subject areas requirement. So we're providing those clock hours that are needed and we're uh, providing some portfolio preparation. Independently, participants must also obtain a high school diploma or GED prior to their application to the council. It's not a requirement prior to our coursework. It is a requirement prior to the application. Um, have to have professional work experience in center-based settings with the age range that you're applying for the credentialing on. Uh, you'll schedule a observation, a verification visit with a CDA professional development specialist. Um, so while we do observations, we do not do CDA observations. So that again is separate, that's independent. And then the actual application online and the assessment fee through the council um, is an additional $425 that's paid to the council for that application. Okay. So uh, I wanna take a moment to pause and reflect here. Um, and so if you can in the chat, just put when you're thinking about uh, what you're looking for in a CDA prep program or what you're already using, if you were already using a CDA prep program, what are some of the challenges that you're facing in programs that you're looking at, in programs that you've used in the past or are currently using? Um, enter some of those challenges into the chat here. Give a moment for a couple of responses. So working on the portfolio, okay. Time for staff to attend, time for them to complete the portfolio. So the portfolio is definitely one um, that comes up. And that is why we, we've been intentional about ensuring that we can support with the portfolio. Um, time management, portfolio. Um, time attending while working, uh, time for work and class. So time, okay, so these are all, these are all great. I'm looking to add to a degree. I wanna learn all I can. Uh, so we did get a question that came in, um, is CDA a path to college? So that's a fantastic question. So CDA um, can be a path to college. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. So we'll go over that a little bit more um, as we go over what our CDA options are. Okay, so these are a lot of great responses here. And what we've done in developing our CDA is really thought about what some of these challenges are and ensured that those were addressed in our coursework. So the first thing that we have here is we have the ability to complete coursework from any device and on a flexible schedule. So I saw timing and the ability to work and attend class come up a few times. And what we've done is we have um, a couple options where even for the facilitated options, there's not a set time that uh, learners need to be present for. So it's not like every Tuesday at 7 p.m. you have to be available for class but rather it's still a, a semi-asynchronous solution uh, where you're going through the coursework on your own, but with the facilitated version, you'll have support 
from a facilitator. You'll have discussion boards, and we'll discuss that a little bit more. Um, also, you can complete the coursework on any device, meaning you can do it on your cell phone, on your tablet, on your computer. Uh, you can be doing it on your cell phone while you're in a doctor's waiting office or um, get to where you're going and pull it up on a tablet or on a computer and not lose track of where you are. You can experience engaging content. So we know TeachStone is known for having really great real classroom videos. We've used comparable videos within this coursework. And in addition to the videos, you're gonna see there's text, there's exercises, there's activities to do. Uh, so it's engaging as well. Um, so we have unique offerings for unique learning needs. So we have a couple of different options, and we're going to discuss these options in a little bit more depth in a moment here. But you'll see that we have an on-demand option. So that's going to be where you can kind of just start whenever. Um, we have facilitated options, which have a little bit more support. Those options can be for you can earn CEUs or you can earn college credit. Uh, so that would be to the question that I read a little bit ago about, is CDA a path to get uh, a college degree? It can be a part of your journey where you're earning some college credits and then going on to earn an associate's or a bachelor's or what have you. Uh, and lastly, we do have a renewal option. Your credential is valid for three years. You do need to renew it every three years and have coursework in the interim. Uh, so we have a renewal option to get that coursework to go towards your uh, renewal application with the council. Okay. Um, and lastly, to me, the real cherry on top is that you can learn class concepts while meeting the CDA credential requirements. So you're essentially, um, I, I'm gonna, to, to steal a phrase that someone uh, shared with me previously, you can uh, feed two birds with one cracker. So essentially you can be getting that credentialing that you need and at the same time learning about class, which we know has uh, really great best practices and whether you're using class in the classroom or not, it's instilling great habits, that child development theory, and the importance of interactions. If you are using class, instead of siloing these two things, you're able to bring them together, help teachers understand how they go hand in hand, uh, and not need two separate trainings for that. Okay, so to dive a little bit deeper into the options here. So our on-demand CDA with class, it is self-paced and it is not facilitated. You have one year to complete it. So you self-pace over that year, you can complete it in less time. Uh, so you could complete it in three or four months if you wanted, you can complete it in eight or nine months, take the full year. It's arranged in mini courses. You can bounce around to these courses. So you can be working on administration one day, and the next day, decide you want to focus on language development. Maybe you want to then go to developing child. Um, you don't have to go in sequential order. So you have a little bit more flexibility like that. Uh, and then there are quizzes and assessments throughout the coursework here. Okay. Um, if you're looking for a little bit more support, we have a facilitated option. So rather than being a year access, you have 24 weeks to complete this coursework. It's three courses that are eight weeks each. So what happens is that there's a specific start date and a specific end date for each of those eight weeks. But during those eight weeks, you can uh, complete it sooner if you'd like. So you'd be able to complete those eight weeks and say six weeks. Um, so you can go kind of at your own pace during that time, as long as you're completing it within the eight weeks. And then if you complete it in six weeks, you would need to wait until, uh, so for two weeks longer until the start of the next course, so that you're staying on track with the rest of the cohort of learners that you're working with. Uh, you can see here what the three courses are and also what the comparable um, college credit for those courses is. 
you're getting the same content from the on-demand coursework. So it's the same great content, but now it's scaffolded and you do need to go in sequential order. So you can't bounce around in that same way as on-demand. You're still getting those quizzes and assessments. We have a facilitated option where you can earn CEUs. We also have a facilitated option where you can earn transferable college credit. And then an additional thing here um, is in addition to the quizzes and the assessments, in the facilitated version, you're also having assignments and discussion boards. Um, so you have assignments that you're turning into your facilitator. You have discussion boards where you're engaging with your facilitator and also engaging with others within your cohort. Um, and for the facilitator with college credit, there's also really rich content podcasts that you have access to. Erin, we have a great question and I don't wanna interrupt your flow, but I yeah. did wanna ask it while it was relevant. Um, Nicole is asking if there's a due date um, for your assignments with that kind of like asynchronous approach. Uh, there's not a due date for the assignments, but you do need to have those completed before you can move on to the next section. Um, so you just want to factor that into your planning. So in theory, I mean, you could, and also you'll see a little caveat as we get into the, the demo itself, because one of the, the aspects that you need to do with the discussion boards is you need to not only respond to the question in the discussion board, but you also need to respond to others within your cohort. So if you get too far ahead, you don't have somebody else to respond to. Um, so that kind of helps keep everybody more on the same pace as well. Okay, awesome. And we had another question about CDA renewal, but that brings me right back to where you were. <laughs> okay, so well, what was the question for renewal? Um, the contact was just asking or saying that they are just need their renewal and do we have any info on CDA renewal and I was like oh. I think so I think it's coming Perfect. soon <laughs> yes here we go so we have our CDA renewal with class um, so this is kind of a combination it is self-paced similar to on demand but there is facilitator support um, it's 45 hours of material it's so that's four and a half CEUs when you get your renewal through the council, it does not have to be specific content areas the way that your initial credentialing is. Uh, so you might be receiving um, those hours over the course of those. Uh, I see someone just asked, how often do you have to renew? So it's three years. So you might be receiving those 45 hours over the course of those three years, or you might see that your renewal is coming up and you realize, I don't have the hours right now crunch time, here you go, 45 hours all together. You're looking a little bit deeper at class. So you see developing child in class, interactions in class, a closer look at class, planning with class, um, and then interacting with family and interacting with colleagues and community. So it's really building on existing class knowledge and taking it another level and supporting in that area while also earning the hours to get your CDA renewal. Okay. So let's take a look. Um, so we are going to switch screens for a moment here and I'm going to share mine. Let's see, here we go. Okay. So I'm in our demo environment and um, just one thing to note here is that I can't show you where it would kind of pull from the original dashboard because I'm in our demo environment, but it would be in your learning hub and that would pull you to this portion here and you'll see your um, CDA courses uh, right here. So you'll see I have a couple different types here because I have the various options. Uh, depending on which one you're in, you may have fewer tiles. So the first one, any of these ones that have um, OD are going to be my on-demand ones. So I can click into one of them. So I'm going to say CDA with class, the developing child. So I can come in and I can look at one of the sections. So say I want to go to Bowlby's attachment theory so that you can see what the content looks like here. Uh, so the content is gonna look similar, 
for all of the different lessons. So it's going to start out with a start section, then there's a learn, and then a check. In the start section, you're going to have your learning objectives. Those objectives are also going to include what CDA competencies this is aligned to, any vocabulary that you should know going into the lesson here. Then you'll have a frame your thinking. So uh, a journal is not a requirement, but it is a suggestion uh, to be able to journal and go through these reflective questions and take notes on what you're thinking, what your thoughts are, and see your growth and development through the process and be able to refer back. Required reading, so downloadable little attachments here. And now we're getting into the learn portion. So you'll see that there's text, there's imagery, there's portions that you can click through to see different uh, kind of lessons. There's activities. So here, um, balances positive and negative feelings about being a caregiver. So I'm going to say accessibility versus ignoring. I knew that was incorrect and it bounced back at me and told me that that was incorrect. Now, if I go to this one, it now shows me that was the correct answer, acceptance first rejection. So I would work through this activity. Do I need to do all of them? Let's see. Yep, so it's gonna make me do all of them. So see, because it's scaffolded, I need to work through all of them here. So it responds to a child's cues notices and prioritizes a child's requests, even among competing ones. That was wrong. And so I got one out of four correct. I could redo this if I wanted to, or I can move on to the next section. So these activities um, you can keep moving on from. Here's a video, some things to notice within the video, and then a quiz. The quiz you also do not need to score a specific score on to move on. Strive to score an 80%, um, but you can move on. The assessments that you have to take, which I'll show you where those are, those are cumulative of multiple lessons. Those you do need to score a specific score on in order to be able to move on. So quiz, I'm not even gonna read the question. I'm just gonna pick an answer and submit. And I picked the right answer. So it not only tells me that my answer is correct, but it also tells me why my answer is correct. If I pick another answer here, and this one was incorrect, and now it explains to me as well why it was incorrect. And then I could go through this quiz. And once I complete the quiz here, you'll see that it now says, so I did awful because I just clicked random answers, um, but it now says what my score is. I did not hit what I was striving for. I can retake it or I can be done and I can exit back. Now, if I come, let's see this way first. So I can go to the next section if I wanted, or I can come back to the main page. So you'll see at the end of the social and emotional development section, there is an assessment. So this assessment, you do need to have um, an 80% on to be able to move on. And a difference here is that whereas with the quizzes, you got the answer immediately with the, um, oh, this one's assignment, not assessment. Oh, uh, so with the assessment, so it's not letting me take it right now because I haven't completed it at all. Um, but with the assessment, uh, you actually have to complete the entire, so here it's 16 questions, complete the entire 16 questions before you can move on. Um, and get that feedback, but you do still receive the feedback to be able to look over anything that you may have gotten incorrect, 
study those questions again and retake the quiz. So we try and ensure that we're being as supportive as possible uh, to be able to continue moving along in the process here. Okay. So another on-demand option. So again, it's gonna look the same. We have our different lessons, assessments, and so if I just click into language development, we are going to see that it looks the same as what we were just seeing. So overview, being required reading, the learn portion with an activity and an observation, uh, a quiz to check, and then you are done. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pause there. Megan, do we have any questions before I shift to the facilitated version? No questions yet, but I will encourage folks to submit them either in the Q&A or the chat if you want to make it a more broad question. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you. Um, okay, so now if I go to our, I need to come back to this main page for me to know which one is which. Um, so if I go to our CUCDA, so this is now our facilitated version. So you'll see this looks a little bit different. Instead of just having the home up here, there's also now announcements. So our facilitators provide announcements regularly. So you see, welcome to the CDA with class. Congratulations on a great week. So you see this encouragement that's going on, different updates that you'll see coming out. And then the modules. And with the modules here, you'll also notice some different things because now we have these water cooler discussions. So this is what I was mentioning previously about these discussion boards uh, that take place uh, within the facilitated version. And you'll see, I won't be able right now to actually show what the discussion board would look like because I need to do some other things first um, since I'm in the demo environment here. But this is what the questions would look like. So here's a prompt from the facilitator and you would respond to one of these prompts with at least two sentences that add meaningful content. And then you also want to reply to at least two posts from another student, again, with meaningful content. So not, um, so not just like, oh, I agree but I agree because I have experienced X, Y, Z and being able to expand upon uh, the content that's been provided. Okay. And then we'll still have, um, so we have a syllabus here, portfolio assignments. In the on-demand version, portfolio is a separate section. Um, so it's not built into each of those different lessons in the same way that with facilitated, it is embedded into the process. Um, so here there's different portfolio assignments. So you'll receive the CDA competency standards book. So it has pages to read from your competency standards book, reflective writing, in some of the later ones, there will be PDFs to download and they're editable PDFs so that you can uh, type directly into them and then save that document. And then you'll see when we click into one of the actual lessons that it's going to look the same as what I showed you in On Demand. Give it a moment to load here. Aaron, while that's loading, we have a question. Sure. Um, is this through a specific app or is this all done through a browser? How would one get to their lessons and assignments on their devices? Sure. So yeah, it's just done through your browser. It's within, um, if you already have a TeachStone sign-in, it would just be on your dashboard. Um, if you do not have a TeachStone sign-in, you would create one so that it would be on your dashboard. Um, but yeah, it's it's accessible, it's mobile accessible through your browser on your phone, your tablet, there's not a specific app or anything. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, thank you, Megan. Um, 
So this loaded, and so again, you'll see it's the same thing we were looking at with on-demand, start, learn, and check with the framing of your thinking, um, the activity, and then videos and a quiz. Okay. And then um, are there any, let's see, if I come into ECE, that's one that I haven't showed yet. So this is going to look the same um, as with the facilitated for CEUs. But you'll see here all of these podcasts that we now have. So we didn't have these podcasts in the um, CEU version. We have all of these really great podcasts here, some additional discussions, um, a lot of really fantastic podcasts. Let me click into one. Let's see. Oh, I can't do a discussion on it don't have access. Um, but so you'll just, you'll get that really rich content uh, to be able to do the college credits here. And those are transferable. Okay. Any questions um, while I'm still in the demo environment here? We have a question. It's not related to the demo environment, but just to clarify, Marta was asking if the CDA with class is the same thing as becoming a class observer. I added, those are two separate certifications, but what else might you wanna to add to that question? Um, so it is, it is pretty different in that um, a CDA credential is for somebody who is in the classroom working with children, uh, whether it's center-based, a family child care, uh, but you're working with the children. A class certification is observing people who are working with the children. Um, so it's just a little bit, it's a little bit different there. And then also what the overall intent is, where the CDA intent is to learn more about child development theory um, and how to be in the classroom. And the um, class observer is, you learn some child development theory, but in a different way. Uh, it's more specific to interactions in the class tool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I know, and I know somebody else had commented earlier on that going through CDA with class kind of sets you up to be prepared even more so for when a class observer comes in and observes mm -hmm. your class you already have that foundational knowledge of what they're looking for as they're coming in exactly. with their clipboards. <laughs> exactly. So you have that understanding of the interactions um, and you're, you're learning it at the same time as you're learning all the rest of your information about how to really excel mm -hmm. in the classroom. Um, and I actually realized one point that I didn't say earlier is that our uh, clock hours here are, uh, they're birth to five. So they're applicable whether you're applying for the infant toddler CDA credential and or the pre-K. So that means that if you're applying for both the infant toddler and the pre-K, you don't need 240 hours. You can use that same 120 hours to apply for your infant toddler as you can to apply for your pre-K. So it also saves you a bit of money that way. Um, I had a program, I had a program who, um, they weren't actually looking to get their CDA, uh, but what they wanted to do going through the CDA for college credits was receive college credit in the early childhood field at a lower cost than it would be to go through a local community college. Wow. Nice. <laughs> also, I just realized that my dog snuck in here. So if you hear that sound <laughs> with my dog um, snoring, I've had people ask me in the past <laughs> if my stomach was growling. It is not. It is my dog. <laughs> um, oh, I love that. Um, well, I, let me go back to what you had said about the training hours. We had somebody who's doing, or the credential hours. Somebody had asked, um, they're doing training hours with the VDOE, Virginia DOE. Um, do those same 120 training hours count towards the CDA hours? 
Uh, I'm not certain because I'm not certain what those 120 hours that VDOE is doing are. Um, Virginia is not one of the states that I directly work with, so I'm not as familiar with what's taking place there. Uh, what I will say is that if it's 120 hours that are in child development as a whole, then it likely does meet that need. If they mention CDA, then it likely meets that need. If it's 120 hours in general, then no. Um, if it's 120 hours focused on class, then no, because that 120 hours is broken into specific segments that the council requires, like health and safety, administration. So it's more robust than just class or, you know, it, it really needs to meet specific criteria. Okay, gotcha. Um, and for those of who might have more specific questions about States. I was chatting with another contact earlier asking about funding in their state. I would recommend um, filling out, there's the link I just dropped in the chat, filling out that form because that will get you in touch with the rep here at Teachstone who um, really has a lot more knowledge about your specific state, your district. So if you fill that out, then you can get in touch with somebody who has all of the details for your specific area. Exactly. We have a few more questions, but I'm going to hold them and let you go through this and then we'll go back to the other questions. Sounds good. Um, so this has been up on the screen. I'm not going to read all of these words here, um, but if you've taken a moment to read some words from previous participants, uh, we've received some really fantastic feedback from our participants about just the ability to have that support putting together a portfolio. Um, I saw a question come in about um, that someone joined a little late, do we offer support putting it together, um, putting the portfolio together, or do you have to sign up for the facilitated version? We provide a little bit more support in the facilitated version in that it's scaffolded and built in through the entire process, but there is still support in the on-demand version as well. Um, we have the different kind of worksheets to work through and things like that. So there is support available for the portfolio, whether it's on demand or facilitated. Um, similarly, nationalities are represented throughout the program, different nationalities, different backgrounds. We know that folks who are applying for a CDA um, might be you know, pretty, pretty soon out of high school or college. They also might be uh, starting a, a new career later in life. They may have been out of the workforce for a while while their kids were growing up and now they're uh, joining the workforce again. They may be parent volunteers who want to get into the workforce. So there's a wide range of learners. So we've tried to make it as engaging as possible for a variety of demographics, as well as um, really as user-friendly and easy with technology as possible. Okay. So we've already kind of gone through the different options here, but this really shows that it's the same rich material in each of the options. It's just adding a little bit more to what you get with each option. So we have our CDA with class on demand, which gets you those 12 CEUs. It's 120 clock hours, uh, introduces you to class concepts. You receive the competency standards book um, and access to the class learning community. It meets the education and portfolio requirements. You get the classroom videos and a flexible schedule. You get all of those things with CDA with class facilitated uh, that has the 12 CEUs. And then you also get specific feedback and guidance from expert facilitators. Now, if you wanna go a step further, you get the college credit version. You receive all the same things as the CEU version. You also get those rich podcasts and additional learning experiences and college credits that can be uh, transferable. Okay, so some common questions that come up. Um, so what languages are the CDA with class programs offered in? Uh, currently, the CDA with class is only offered in English. Um, we are looking at potentially adding, hopefully adding a Spanish version. Um, one thing to say is if you do have bilingual learners who are interested, we have bilingual facilitators who can support 
but and and maybe the assignments could be um, in Spanish, but the uh, the content will be in English. What supplies are included with CDA with class? Um, so you receive all of the coursework, access to the class learning community, and then again you do receive the uh, competency standards book from the council for the age level that you've selected. So even though the material is birth to five, you select infant, toddler, or pre-K when uh, purchasing the CDA so that you receive that age level of book. How much, well, if we can go back for one second, how much support do I receive with the on-demand version? Uh, we've discussed that a bit as far as the portfolio. With all of the options, you have our customer support team available to you. We also have a CDA support team. And then with the facilitated version, you have direct access to a specific facilitator as well. Uh, but we definitely provide as much support as possible, whether it's the facilitated version or the on-demand version. Okay. Um, pricing. Pricing comes up a lot. And from my understanding, um, our pricing is uh, very, not only competitive, but, but good compared to some other programs out there. So our on-demand is $329 uh, per person. Our facilitated with CEUs is $549 a person. Facilitated with college credit is $1,299 a person. And then our renewal is $215 each. And for all three of those initial ones, you receive the competency standards book with it. With your renewal, um, you also receive a class dictionary. So that said, do we have any questions uh, for me to work through here? Yes, I loved this question. Let me see if I can find it again. And if I've missed your question I, and we haven't uh, asked it already, please submit it again. I'm trying to keep up with the chat, um, but I don't want to miss anybody's question. So I love this question and I kind of want to put it to you, Erin, but I also wanted to ask everyone here, um, Sherry or Sheree, I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, how do we as coaches and coordinators, how can we become the driving force behind our staff receiving or going through the CDA process? That is a fantastic question. Um, so I will say, so we are working on building out more robust reporting functionality within the platform. Um, currently, administrators wouldn't have direct visibility into um, their learners' engagement uh, through the platform, unless if they're discussing directly with an educator. But what we can do is that we can run reports on our end and share those with administrators, because we definitely want y'all to be able to um, be that driving force and provide that additional support as needed. Some things I've heard is maybe if you have a cohort of learners going through together, having a monthly meeting or so where you all come together and discuss what's being learned and maybe work on your portfolio or something like that, but being able to have those times that you're all coming together. Um, but as Megan mentioned, I would love to see other ideas if other people are um, putting any responses in the chat of what they do as well. Yeah, please, please add what, you know, your program might be doing to support the folks going through CDA in your program. Um, in the meantime, let me ask a couple other questions that are coming through. Uh, how can you pay for this and how do you sign up? Sure, so um, you can sign up one of two ways. One is uh, through our webpage. So if you go onto uh, cda.teachstone.com or is it cdastore.teachstone.com? Um, I Megan was just will, pulling up. Megan will, yeah. Megan will drop the <laughs> link in the chat in a moment here. <laughs> Okay, so um, it's available in our store. Now, one thing I'll say about being available in our store is that um, you want your educators to purchase it themselves because there's a user agreement and also because when they purchase it, it gets added to their dashboard. So you don't wanna purchase for them because then you'll end up with their CDA course on your dashboard. Um, and so if, if you have a group of CDA learners, so a group being 
two or more, you can reach out to um, your TeachStone contact reps, which Megan had dropped a link earlier. We'll also provide the email address and phone number in a moment. You can reach out to your reps. And what we would do is place the order behind the scenes for you uh, and then provide a voucher code that your learners can then go in and register themselves with that voucher code so that they don't need your uh, company credit card and you can't upload a PO to the system so they wouldn't be able to do that um, so that this way they can go in and pay, pay for themselves. But you get that one invoice. You don't have to individually register everyone. You don't have to provide everyone with a credit card, et cetera. Um, so those would be the two ways to go about it. That makes it easy. I have been here for four years and I don't even think I realized that. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Amy's asking, I selected pre-K and I only received the CDA competency standards book. How many other books will I receive through the mail for the class? Sure, so you just received that one book. So you received the book for whichever age level um, you've selected, and then you received the coursework that's all online. Awesome. Amy, good luck with everything. That's exciting. Um, and I did see also, we did get a response that someone else said that they hold lunchtime check-ins um, every three months with all of their CDA candidates. So that's that's great to be able to just come together and make sure that everyone's on the same page, see if anyone has any questions, see how you can support um, and be able to provide that. You know, it, I love online learning, but it's always fantastic to be able to have that face-to-face -face person who can have those uh, those check-ins, weekly check-ins, as someone just said, to be able to um, be face-to-face -face with them in addition to any support that our facilitators are providing remotely. Mm -hmm. I like how the responses kind of vary from three months to weekly. I think you could probably find the right cadence that makes sense for your team. And, and it might also be based on the individual learner because some individual learners are going to need a little bit more structure uh, to mm -hmm. stay on target and pace and others are going mm -hmm. to be more, you know, um, self-driven and, and mm -hmm. not just self-driven, but like being able to focus and stay on track and, um, organizing themselves. And, and some folks need additional support with that. So knowing who mm -hmm. your learners are and how much, um, to support them. And yeah, that's a great point. Um, okay, well, let me switch gears a little bit. Travis asked, I worked with kids that are three to five. What age group do I choose? Sure, so three to five is toddler, or toddler. I, I said that I was so like, wait, no, I don't too. think that's right. I said that so, no, I was just like, I had words in my mouth and the words in my head didn't. It was yeah. the wrong words. <laughs> yes, three to five okay. is pre K. Uh, so birth to three would be infant and toddler three to five is pre-K. Um, family child care is a separate credential. Um, the, well, and you'd be able to get the FCC book and that one is birth to five. Man, I don't. Gotcha. That's okay. I oh, got your back. Totally I was going to, I was going to jump in and, and help out. <laughs> I'm here for you. I, I was so okay. confident in the wrong answer too. <laughs> Julie asks, um, who are our facilitators? That's, a, oh, that's we, a big question. We have quite yeah. a few. Yes. Um, so let's see. Is Megan still doing facilitating or is she just in the behind the I scenes? I believe so. I, um, yeah, I just chatted with her the other day about CDA work. <laughs> yeah. um, I, let's see. Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have, I don't know. We have a handful of We've them. We've got a team. Know. We've got a team. And I will say. Though I couldn't name all their names right now, we have a few Slack channels with them at, here at Teachdown, and they're all the nicest people. I love talking to all of them. They're so helpful. Even when I have, like, I haven't been through the CDA process myself. I'm on the marketing team, right? But I have questions about it, and they're super, super helpful and kind and patient and understanding with me as someone who's not familiar with this work. So um, I love them all. <laughs> and I think that's just uh, one of the, the challenges of, of COVID remote work is uh, not, not knowing some of the folks who have joined um, in the past two mm -hmm. years because we don't get to see each other all the time like we used to. 
Well, I did see also, um, as you were going through the demo, Vivian Polo, Joanna Parker, and you may, if you've been to one of our custom events, or if you've been to Interact, or even the back to school series, free online series that we did, um, they have been presenters at those online conferences that we've, free conferences that we've been hosting. Um, Joanna recently did a webinar with us, or was going to do a webinar, but things changed. So I've worked with several of them. They're all wonderful um, folks. And you, you may recognize them from other work that they do here at Teachstone. Okay, um, more questions. Yeah, does my mentor teacher I have at my site, ooh, let me make sure I read this again. Does my mentor teacher I have at my site in Head Start I have to be a facilitator, I'm guessing? It's so those are two separate things. So it really depends. Your mentor teacher, just like your mentor teacher may or may not be a class observer, they may or may not be class certified, they may or may not be um, trained in CDA. So that's more program specific um, and individual specific. Um, is there a family child care certificate? I have a CDA in infants and toddlers. Uh, how can I learn more about the FCC? There is an FCC certificate. Um, the CDA course is going to be the same because it's still just that birth to five, uh, but the book is different and the credential through the council is different. So if you go to um, the council's page, so the Council for Professional Recognition, if you go to their page, you'll see the different options. So there's infant toddler, there's pre-K, there's FCC. There is also a home visitor option that we currently uh, do not provide, but we're working on uh, a fourth course that would be then meeting the need for home-based and would also be adding additional college credits. Awesome. Okay. I think we've gotten everybody's questions. Again, if we have missed it, please submit again. Um, but I think we're good. So just a friendly reminder, we're going to email everybody the recording and we'll email you the slides. And I think that's it. We can also include the links to how you can contact your specific representative here at Teachstone because they will be the most knowledgeable as to answer questions about, you know, maybe grant opportunities in your state that they might know of and other things like that. So we'll we'll include that in the email as well. Um, do you mind going to the next slide, please? Oh, yes, and you can email us or call us directly. Um, we have these links, so when we send out the slides, you can just click that learn more or click the phone number that we've got and it'll start a phone call. And then next slide, please. Okay, all right, well, I said the recording certificate. Oh yes, certificate of attendance. So um, actually this one does not have a certificate of attendance. I'm so sorry to say this was an error on the slide. Um, our product demos, we don't offer certificates of attendance, but we will still receive or share out the recording in the slides. Um, and then if you have any other questions or just like teach down or want to interact with us, we're also on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and then we also have a class learning community that's free, open to everybody. It's our forum for all things class where you can ask questions of other teachers or ad admins, coaches, you name it. If you've got any kind of class questions, and you can visit us there at community.teachstone.com. And Erin, thank you for presenting today. You covered so much material and it was so helpful. Absolutely. Thank you for joining with me. Um, it is always a pleasure to do these demos. Ooh, we had a question on the phone number. Can So the phone number is 877-401-8007. I will yep. type that in really quick here. 877-401-8007. There you go. Thank you. And thanks everybody for your time. We appreciated having everybody join and we're so engaged in the chat. I love that. Thanks all and have a great day. Thank you.